Holden can't remember every detail of what happened on that fateful Saturday night in December, but he sure remembers how he felt. It was the night of Jane and Stradlater's date. And instead of going to bed after completing Stradlater's composition, he waited up, anxious for his return. Jane was the only girl that Holden really liked, and he had this sickening feeling that Stradlater had made a move on her. Holden knew all his dirty tricks. Finally, Stradlater returned to their dorm room. When he read over the composition Holden had written for him, he started complaining bitterly. It wasn't what Stradlater asked for, but he went overboard with the insults. Holden was hurt. Not only had he written it as a favour, but he'd also written about something deeply personal. It was a descriptive piece about a baseball mitt that had belonged to his brother, Ali, who died of leukaemia three years earlier. Holden grabbed the paper back and tore it up. After an awkward silence, Holden started grilling Stradlater about his date with Jane. The tension began to rise until the two boys clashed violently. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out, and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks, and back to the video. Naturally, Holden copped the worst of it. What a mess. Holden felt so depressed afterwards that he went looking for Ackley. Poor Ackley was already awake, thanks to Holden and Stradlater's fight. He wanted to know what the fight was about, but Holden dodged the question. Instead, Holden asked Ackley if he wanted to play cards and tried to draw him into conversation. But it was late, and Ackley had church in the morning. He just wanted to sleep. In the end, Holden went back to stewing over Stradlater and his sleazy habits with girls. Then he heard Stradlater returning to their room and going to bed. After trying once more to make Ackley talk, Holden finally left the poor guy alone. Out in the corridor, Holden made a decision. He would leave Pensy Prep that very night. He'd go to New York, chill at a cheap hotel for a few days, then head home to face the music. Remember, Holden had been expelled from Pensy for his poor academic performance, but his parents weren't due to find out until Wednesday. He wanted to wait until they digested the news before he showed his face. So, Holden returned to his room, packed his things, counted all his birthday money, sold his typewriter to a kid down the hall, and skedaddled but not before he yelled a nasty goodbye at the top of his lungs. Holden trudged all the way to the train station in the snow. By now, it was late and very cold. Holden's face was still sore and bloody from his run-in with Stradlater. So while he waited for a train, he tried to wash his face with a handful of snow. Once he was on the train... A pretty lady got on and sat right next to him. What a looker! It turned out that she was the mother of a Pensy prep boy, Ernest Morrow. Holden knew him and despised him. Not that he said that to Mrs Morrow. In fact, after he introduced himself using a fake name, Holden fed her a bunch of lies about what a champion her son was. That's the thing about Holden. Once he starts lying... He can't stop. He also flirted with Mrs Morrow. He gave her a cigarette and, despite his bleeding nose, offered her a cocktail from the club car. He then fed her some nonsense about having a brain tumour and going on a fake holiday to South America with his grandma. Holden really laid it on thick. Eventually, he got off at Penn Station in New York and headed to a phone booth. But it was late and, sadly, he couldn't think of anyone to call. So he hopped in a cab. Holden must have really been lonely by this point, because in addition to asking the cab driver about the ducks in Central Park South, Holden also invited him for a cocktail. 
Naturally, the driver declined and drove him to his destination, the Edmont Hotel, one of New York City's more <clears throat> colourful establishments. His room was shabby, and the view from his window was just another part of the hotel. But Holden was too depressed to care. However, he did amuse himself by watching some of the interesting things the other guests were up to. They hadn't bothered to pull their shades down. With sex on the brain, Holden decided to phone a girl who lived in a nearby hotel. Faith Cavendish had a raunchy reputation, and Holden hoped she would meet up with him. He even tried to lower his voice to sound older and dropped the name of a mutual acquaintance. But it really was very late, and Faith wasn't up for it. But for Holden, the night was still young, so he got ready to check out the Lavender Room nightclub downstairs. In the process, he got lost in his thoughts about his kid sister, Phoebe. He wished he could speak to her, but he couldn't risk his parents picking up the phone. Instead, he enjoyed thinking of Phoebe's quirks and how nice it was to hang out with her and Ally back in the day. But he had to snap out of it. The lavender room awaited. The waiter gave Holden a lousy table in the back and refused to sell him alcohol. He may have been tall and turning grey, but he was only 16 at the time. So there he was, stone-cold sober, hating the band, and making eyes at three women he wasn't really attracted to. They were sitting at the table next to him and must have been around 30 years old. He managed to take one to the dance floor, and she could really dance, but her conversation skills were shocking. All he could really get out of her was her name and where she was from. Bernice from Seattle, Washington. The thing is, Bernice was such a good dancer that Holden was half in love with her by the time they sat back down. Holden sat at Bernice's table, uninvited, and tried to make conversation with her and her two friends, but it was like talking to a brick wall. He then danced with the other two, Laverne and Marty. Laverne was okay, but Marty was like dragging around a statue. In a last-ditch attempt to inject some life into the party, Holden bought all the girls more drinks. But all they did was knock them back, say the bare minimum, and ditch Holden with their entire night's bill. Rude! Holden left soon after that. But will he go upstairs to rest or kick on into the night? Stay tuned to find out. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.